What's especially interesting to me about this image is the way that Don Francisco, the man at the center, expands. His shoulders really fill the space, and he dominates this painting in a very dramatic way. He takes up more room than either of his sons. He's broader than his two sons. And he looks straight at us. So there is a way in which his gaze engages our gaze as viewers that is almost confrontational or questioning, if you will. The two sons, however, look at him and not at us. So there is an interesting way in which the gazes of the figures in this painting both deny our presence. The sons aren't really interested in the fact that we're outside the painting looking at them, yet invite us to become part of their history, in that Don Francisco looks straight at us. This posing of the figures, the different gazes of these men, is not specific to this particular portrait. This is something that one can see well when one compares this image with other portraits of the time, not only in Europe, but also from Latin America. So that this posing of the figures, the gestures that they make, the glances that we can determine are in fact part and parcel of a language of portraiture. They're part of a larger portrait tradition that transcends these particular men at this particular moment in space and time. The other thing that I think is unsettling about this image is the way the gold jewelry of the men, jewelry that marks them as clearly indigenous, is juxtaposed with those incredible rough collars. We just don't expect Dutch-like lace collars to be worn in the city of Quito with that kind of gold jewelry. So there's a kind of jarring juxtaposition, one that we're not taught to expect when we think about what was going on either in Europe or in Latin America in the late 16th century. And that, I think, is something that also draws us into this image Maybe in some cases more so, perhaps in a different way even, than Don Francisco's gaze that invites us to think about who he is and what he's doing there.